Trying to do Iron Twins 15 without having an unkillable team isn't exactly the easiest thing to do. By the way, there's time codes down below if you just want to scrub through to specific parts. Don't want to waste your time. If you don't have these specific champions, there might be some replacements, but we'll go ahead and talk about all of that. Um, if you can build an unkillable team, I highly recommend doing an unkillable team. Like the ones that Bronco puts out are insane. And I, I still run them on my other account, but I wanted to share this with you guys in the event that you can't do an unkillable team or you uh, want to try something else, a little bit more of a traditional approach, uh, tackling the Iron Twins the way they were meant to be, uh, if you will. But this is in by no means the only way to do things. Um, yeah, and this is end game gear. This is an end game dungeon. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Mithrala is going to be in the team and uh, she is a free to play champion. You can get her from doing Hydra. Pytheon was a past fusion. Maybe you have him sitting in a vault not doing anything with him. Wither the Crown might not be the easiest to pull, but you know, if you ever do, there might be other replacements for here. She's basically, uh, we'll, we'll go over that. And then Corvus, an awesome G champion. And then Geomancer, of course. So you see right here, best time is 106. On average, it takes about a minute, but sometimes it, you know, I miss some some stuff here or like the, the you know, whatever happens, happens. And it takes a little bit longer, but it's 100% consistent all the way up to stage 15. You can use this team to climb um, from Iron Twins 1 all the way to 15. Um, just as long as you get the base foundation of what everybody's doing, I think you might be able to craft something yourself. I'll share the builds and everything with you guys soon here, but let's go ahead and run this and I'll talk about everybody. Starting from the left to the right, let's talk about Wither the Crown. Wither the Crown is an awesome champion who just won't stop healing constant heals if you go up against her in arena you'll know that she is annoying because she constantly places increased defense the heals the um the cleanses so trying to take her down and trying to take the team down when she's around is not exactly the easiest thing to do plus she increases buff durations just like you saw so helping the team to stay extremely tanky helping them to survive if you don't have wither the crown try to fit in somebody else who does the same things that she does I, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head but if you can get somebody who constantly heals and just like doesn't stop healing and can place increased defense definitely try to work them in if you guys know anybody off the top of your head uh then please share in the comments uh people who watch my videos often go to the comments and can learn from the community that's that's why i bring up a lot of these discussions or i share a lot of these things because one i don't know everything and i rely on you guys to teach me again i'm just the guy behind the camera but i'm just your average raid player just like you but people can learn from the comments so if you have ideas or you, you can you can uh, improve upon this please share it corvus i feel is an underrated champion i need to do an, uh, a guide on him he places decreased attack on the A1 to start with, okay? The Iron Twins is hitting pretty damn hard, but if you can get decreased attack on him, then he hits obviously less harder. He will also place a crap ton of poisons. So all of these poisons will tick off and do a lot of damage to him. It just, it just compacts, it compiles on top of, uh, compounds is the word I'm looking for. And then he also places the poison sensitivity. So if you can get somebody who places um, decreased attack, try to put them in of course if you can get somebody who places a bunch of poisons that could also help i think theodore might actually be a good a good slot in um because he places quite a few poisons no mm, maybe Cavalax, but he might be a little bit difficult to help survive because he places a crap ton of poisons but yeah so a lot of damage will be coming from corvus Mithrala, a champion that you get from doing Hydra, is going to be here too. I love her A1 with a bunch of poisons. It's it's an awesome A1 because now we're doing even more damage on top of that. She does the cleanse. She gives the shield. She does the hex. She does the increased attack and increased defense. And uh, she puts up strength in. So we're staying alive a lot longer. Geomancer. We already know our main man, Geomancer. HP burns, reflecting some of that damage whenever he does place HP burns. In fact, I think most of the damage is going to be coming from Geomancer. So the damage, where we're getting our killing from, where, you know, the main reason we're able to kill 
is because of Corvus and Geomancer. The poisons and the HP burns. But like, if you do the traditional Bronco um, unkillable team, at least I'm pretty sure it was Bronco that, that put the team together. If you're doing that, then all of the damage is basically going to come from Geomancer with his HP burns. But look at this. So, so close to death here. So close to death here. But look at this. Oh boy. Oh, Geomancer is dead. But it's okay. Because we, we get him brought back and the heals are just insane. So Geomancer will be doing a, a good amount of damage anytime the Iron Twins attacks us. Then that damage is going to get reflected. And of course, like I said, this is 100%. This hasn't failed me. This, this team doesn't fail. And I've run it hundreds of times. I've been using this, this team on this account for a while. Pytheon. Pytheon was a fusion champion. So more than likely you have him. Or if you're like me and you believe in the conspiracy theory that Polarium heavily weights fusion champions, then you're probably going to pull him somewhere down the line. See, this is one of the runs that takes a little bit longer. Um, for one reason or another, I, I don't know specifically, but yeah, this is one of the runs that takes a lot longer. Pytheon, cleanse um block debuffs as well as some healing and the revive in case somebody does that so i ran it four times today and um let's go ahead and dive into the presets start off with the presets mithrala open with the a1 hit the a2 or sorry mithrala open with the a1 oh i guess i don't actually even use the increased defense and oh you know what that's right because i i have um and the increased attack doesn't really do anything for us. So yeah, we can actually turn that off. You can turn it off, you can leave it on, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but I think if you just have this, you can pump out more damage. So like if you close this off, Mithrala won't do anything else except for the A1 to put more poisons or do the A2. So just keep that in mind. Open with the A1, cleanse with the A3, as well as placing the shield and the strength in. Pytheon, open with the A1. You want to prioritize the A3 because in the event that Geomancer does die, because he, you know, he, I mean, you guys saw him die. I'm going to put more defense on him later, but he's been doing well so far. You want to prioritize the A3 in case somebody does die and you can bring them back. The A2 for, um, uh, prioritize the A2 for A2. Prioritize the A2. Secondly, second priority, A2 is what I'm trying to say. God damn. Um, you, already got, you guys already know he's going to heal for every debuff removed, and then he's going to put the block buffs. So uh, that's Pytheon, Wither the Crown, open with the A1, places the continuous heal, which is insane, and then remove all debuffs, and then the huge heal, and then you're going to do the increased defense, increased duration. That's the second priority, but if you, you know, prioritize this, you're good. Corvus! Prioritize field research. This is going to place the poison and the poison sensitivity. Then second priority is going to be the A2, where he increases where he increases the duration. I slur my words sometimes. Increases the duration of all enemy debuffs, and then the second hit increases the duration of all ally buffs. I don't know why this guy doesn't get enough love. I think Corvus is freaking awesome. Geomancer, turning off the A2, only prioritizing the A3 to place the weaken and the HP burn. And so that is all you need right there. Let's go ahead and talk about the gear that I have on them real quick. So Mithrala, and this is the same Mithrala that I use for like the dungeons, for spider and uh, all other content, basically. Priority is going to be survivability accuracy and speed so a decent amount of uh, hp pretty decent amount of defense good amount of speed 271 and then 700 and almost 50 accuracy you want to make sure she's letting those debuffs but again i use her in other content so those are her stats let's talk about um pytheon pytheon is my arena pytheon and high hp high defense a good amount of speed so pushing 286 a uh, good amount of resistance but that's mainly because i use them in arena it's the, it's a low amount of resistance if i'm being kind of honest so yeah there's that and then um oh, wait, 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 let's go back to wither the crown wither the crown stalwart and defiant the re part of the reason why she's so tanky and doesn't want to die is because she's getting so much damage mitigation from AoEs, especially against the Iron Swins, 
you know, that's that's just huge. Negative 45% damage taken from AoE attacks, and you want to stack that on top of Pythion's passive. So, of course, you're looking at HP, defense, decent amount of speed. I'd like to make her faster, but she's good enough where she is right now. And then we're going to move on to our damage dealers. Our main man, Corvus. Gotta do a guide on him soon. He is the Corvus that I use to solo Dragon. That's, you know, that's the reason why he's in uh, Regen and Perception. So you don't have to have him in re Regen and Perception. You can have him in, in other sets that work for you. But the main thing is you want to make sure that he's not too um, squishy. So make sure, she, uh, make sure he has the accuracy to place the poisons. Make sure he's got a good amount of HP and defense and make him fast. Uh, Geo. Second Geomancer is what we're using. Geomancer, we have him in Relentless gear. And this is the same Geomancer that I use in pretty like Like, all these champions I use all around. It just so happens that they work for this traditional Iron Twins team. You don't have to have him in Relentless. If you can make him faster, I would make him faster. But these are his stats. Low HP, a little bit lower on the defense, and that's why you saw him die. But the main thing here is you want enough accuracy to land the HP burns. A little more accuracy to make it more consistent, I think. And this is my first Geomancer. So I want to see something. Let's let's take out this Geomancer and put in Geomancer number one and see how it how it um how it goes. Where is Geomancer? Geomancer number one set that priority because this one's going a lot faster and he's got a little more defense a little less hp though so let's go ahead and try this but he's got more accuracy so let's see it let's run it yeah so he works too um and you saw those stats were were a lot different 